funny. Well, this is great. Right now I'm hiking the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee people. And it's so exciting because there's so much to discover about our history, about the land. Welcome to Across the Land. My name is Crystal Lavalley. And I am Barry Mitzwing Shalafu. And it is an honor to be able to share with you indigenous empowerment stories, people who have faced racism and addiction and live to tell their victories. Hey everyone, right now I am on the beautiful Wet'suwet'en territory. Oh, it's so stunning. The particular community behind me was named Morristown for well over a hundred years, but when we arrived, we actually got to celebrate the historic name change with the locals to Witset. Now, Witset is their traditional Wet'suwet'en language, which means first or before anyone. One of the things that had to happen was a surveying of the 139 former sites of residential schools. 20 sites have been surveyed so far, but the toll of confirmed unmarked graves is over 6,000. And so, um, you know, as leaders, we need to continue to carve a path forward so that we can see a great healing come. Indigenous people are walking around a little bit taller because of you. Did you mean to inspire so many? Just hearing you say that um, uh, makes me smile and makes me incredibly happy if I have had the opportunity to reach out into entire communities across the country and inspire at least one or more um, young Indigenous people that, uh, that means I'm doing something right. Joining us today is three-time Juno Award winner, Inuk singer-songwriter, Susan Aglukar. Welcome, Susan. Thank you. Your journey, it didn't start, didn't start easy. When I left home, Rankin is part of the home, um, <clears throat> I left because I had just been part of the court case against my child abuser, um, and we won the case. Now, Dr. Sakina, you're also an author. You've written a few books, yes. four books. Uh, tell us about this book, Two Winters. Two Winters is a novel that I wrote about an Inuit prophet that lived in the early 1800s in, on the Kobuk River in Alaska and he became a prophet and he began to prophesy many, many strange things. Airplanes, heat in the homes, telephones. Well, we appreciate all the work that you do uh, bringing those ancient stories to the forefront. It's an honor to have you with us.